Good morning from the Okeechobee National Forest. Uh, today, I want to talk about 10 tips for backcountry car camping, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, I love it. Absolutely love it. It's a great way to get new campers involved because you're able to bring a lot more stuff, but you can still get very, very, very far away from civilization where you really feel remote and get to enjoy nature as nature actually is. So, let's get into this. But first, Tip number one, if you go on Google Maps and you find where you want to go, which we'll talk about in a minute, you need to go to the option to download that part of the map. Now that's really important. So you want to pinch zoom Google Maps out till you're capturing the area you plan to go, a lot of the area around that area, and then at the bottom or the top or wherever, the map needs to capture excuse me, needs to capture your exit. It's very important. As you get out here, there's no cell service. Um, some phones work on satellite for maps, some don't. Mine doesn't do too well, I have an iPhone 7 Plus. That's why I always download the map of the area I'm going to. So I know I can get out, even if I have zero cell service. I mean, especially if I don't end up going to the place where I originally planned to go, which happened to me this weekend actually. Tip number two, you're not the first person that will be camping in these areas. Look for other campsites. Uh, chances are people have been camping in these areas off these national forest roads for years and years and years before you. So just look, uh, you know, you'll see where cars have pulled off of the road and you can spot some fire pits and some, some uh, nice clearings. And yeah, utilize that. Tip number three, it's always a good idea to camp near some water. Not only is it a source of water for you, it also is a little bit of a lullaby when you're in your tent at night. Um, depending on the time of the year, it could be a swimming hole. It helps you clean your pots and pans. It's awesome to be next to water. So what you want to do is get on Google Maps and look and see where national forest roads follow streams, creeks, or rivers. And referring back to my last point, you're going to see where people, other people before you, have pulled off on the road and made fire pits and have a nice clearing right next to the water. I've camped at some of the most beautiful camping spots in my life doing just this. I look where a national forest road follows a creek, I drop a pin, I save the map like tip number, tip number one, head out there, and uh, you usually have your pick. Uh, depending on how uh, heavy the season is, you might be fighting for some good spots, even in remote parts of the National Forest in America. But that's okay, you'll find yours. Tip number four, leave the city early enough to find a good spot, set up camp, gather firewood, and still enjoy the evening. That's another tip I failed to do yesterday. So I did everything by the book, but I got out here, and um, the place I had selected had just been logged, selectively logged, and it was just not a pretty spot. So I spent about almost two hours combing the other areas within my map where I saw national forest roads following creeks. And it's just a mixture of, of things, and I ended up in a spot I'm not thrilled about. It's a good spot, but I'm not thrilled about it. But I was definitely rushed to set up camp. I had to throw up my tent, throw up all, throw all the sleeping equipment in there, um, and I had to immediately bust ass and start looking for firewood. Once I got the firewood, I had to process it down into usable sections. I had to build a shanty over it to keep it dry because it rained last night. And at that point, I still had to dig and build a fire pit, make a fire, cook dinner, and it was just all way too crammed together. I didn't relax any last night, or yesterday evening rather, just because it took me so long to find a spot. If I would've had an hour and a half or two hours more than I did yesterday, it would have been a very nice, relaxed, slow-paced evening, but that's okay. Lesson learned, and that's why it made the list. Tip number six, always bring backup cooking equipment. Now, I actually do have plenty of firewood that lasts me through the weekend. It's covered because it rained last night, it's raining right now. And I might make a fire for breakfast and, and uh, get a little wet, but for a cup of coffee first thing in the morning, 
not looking to get wet and build a fire and fight the elements. So I break out the, the propane burner here and I spent probably less than $25 on this whole setup. Came from Fred Meyer if you know what those stores are here in the Northwest. So yeah, there's no reason you shouldn't bring this along because you have the space as you're car camping. So why not spend $25 to guarantee you can eat and have, some, have a cup of coffee in the morning. Number seven, and this might be more important in the West than anywhere else, but you need to call your National Forest Representative office and ask about any burn bans. Now, out West and especially in uh, Central and Eastern Oregon, they're really, really strict on, on burns sometimes. It seems like sometimes from June until October or November, you can't have any fires. But it's April here. Everything, it's, it's raining right now, number one. Everything is so lush and green, even though I am in the high desert. But I called anyway, and um, made 100% certain, even though the website didn't say it, I just wanted to make sure that I could have fires legally out here because under certain conditions, these western high desert forests are just tinder boxes, just waiting for a stray spark. So be safe with your fires, and call and make sure you're legally allowed to have one. So tip number eight is build responsible fires and be responsible with your fires. Um, again, more of a problem in these uh, sort of drier western forests. But you typically want to have your fire pit dug a little bit into the ground. You want to have a fire ring of rocks around it. You don't want to be building a fire bigger than you need. You want to put it out before you go to bed. Um, yeah, just be responsible. You know, if you're camping, then I would assume you know how to um, how to respect a fire and to build a fire safely and to put it out before you go to bed. But I just wanted to mention it. It's very important out here in the West. Number nine, also call the National Forest Office and ask about vehicle restrictions. Now, the forest I'm in now offers a map and different roads have different restrictions based on the time of the year. Um, where I am right now, actually, there's no restrictions any time of the year, but there are certain areas that you can only bring a car through mid-April, and you can only bring an ATV through summer, and then you can only bring a snowmobile a certain few months in the winter. And there are some months where there's no vehicles allowed on any of the roads. So don't get caught bringing a vehicle um, somewhere where you're not supposed to. And number 10, and this is a no duh, pick up your trash, bring everything out that you brought in plus some and again you have the capacity your car camping so why not help the forest out and help the next visitors by bringing somebody else's trash out if they if you see like a receipt on the ground or or a beer can here or there and it happens and it's the most depressing thing to see honestly I mean I am right now I am way 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 out into the the bush and just if I take a look around right now I see one I see one definite piece of trash another thing I think is a piece of trash and a beer can because somebody's used this campsite before it makes me sick to my stomach so that's why I always when I'm car camping make sure to bring a pretty large quantity of other people's trash out with me because a lot of people won't do it and it's gonna make the experience better for the next camper so that's my top 10 tips for backcountry car camping you guys stay safe out there and enjoy and preserve the national forests. See you later.